Warning, this video contains drinking and swear words. If you're a child or naughty language bothers you, this isn't the video you're looking for. And I could probably make a sailor blush this video. In the 50s, we got some beautiful team-ups between Batman and Superman. Some stories were intriguing. Other stories were a bit wacky. And in one story, Superman breaks the space-time barrier to bring Batman to the past where he, uh, accuses him of witchcraft. Welcome to another episode of Comic Book Storytime where we take a single comic issue, this could be an origin story or just a particular storyline that I really enjoyed, and we retell it. This is in our continued celebration of Batman vs Superman being released in March, and if you haven't seen my other Superman videos, I might do that first. You don't have to, but it's a, it's a gentle, gentle suggestion. Today we're going to be talking about issue number 187 released in World's Finest Comics in 1969, and it features two of my favorite superheroes teaming up, Batman and Superman. Well, at least they're in my top 10 favorite list. So grab your adult beverage, or if you are not of the appropriate age, grab your non-alcoholic adult beverage, and let's begin. The cover depicts Superman leading the charge for Britain during the Revolutionary War. Superman shouts, Ha ha ha! Ford, soldiers of Britain, I'll lead you to victory over General Washington's forces. Batman cries out, No, Superman, stop! You can't betray your country! You act like a man possessed by the devil! No, stop, Superman. This is so out of character for you during this time in the comics. What evil influence has taken possession of the Man of Steel? Why has America's greatest super champion turned against the cause of freedom in the revolutionary era? What has changed the nation's guardian into the Demon Superman? Honestly, you want my opinion? Probably just for shits and giggles, which is the reason why he does anything during this time in comics. But I will indulge you. Why, good sir? Why is he like a Demon Superman? We opened to Superman and Batman in Salem during colonial times with Batman in the stocks and Superman standing idly by. Batman cries out, Superman, don't let them burn me at the stake. Superman responds, The law is the law, Batman. You have been found guilty of witchcraft. The penalty for being a sorcerer is death by burning. You're probably thinking right about now, wow, that's really fucked up. I want you to keep in mind that this is the man that hypnotized Batman into having some Fight Club type double personality to make Batman believe that Superman had found a new buddy to fight crime with. Batman was so devastated that he was thinking about giving up crime fighting. Why did Superman do this? Because I honestly feel like during this time in the comics, the only way he could keep friends was by giving them crippling self-doubt. A woman approaches Superman. Batman is your friend, Superman. You know he is innocent. Help him. Oh, what can I do to melt your heart of steel? I heard he really hates bad drivers. You could start by killing some of those. Also, poor people's housing. He really, really dislikes poor people's housing. Superman tells her, nothing, Miss Sylvia. The law must take its course. The demon and Batman must be destroyed by fire. In the lonely hours before the execution, Sylvia visits Batman. Batman, what has come over Superman? I don't know, chick I literally just met and probably am going to bang until I go back to my own time and then never mention again. It's as if he wants me dead. But why? Why? Why would Superman ever do anything to simply fuck with me? It's not like he has a history of this or anything. As the grim day dawns, Ben Franklin comes to where Batman is tied to a stake. Good people, you all know me, Ben Franklin. Don't allow this man to be murdered. Witches and sorcerers don't exist, except in superstitious minds. Ben shows a petition signed with the names of signers of the Declaration of Independence to protest these barbaric punishments. But Superman? Superman isn't having any of that shit. He brought Batman 200 years in the past to burn. And by God, that fucker's gonna burn. Superman shouts, Batman is a sorcerer and I'll prove it. Demon, start your own fire. Superman thinks, I'll use my heat vision to ignite the kindling. No one will see my invisible heat rays. And he starts a fire at his best friend's feet. Honestly, this is the best you could hope for being Superman's friend back then. The crowd gasps and cries out, He's a sorcerer! 
Batman's mind races forward to the 20th century, remembering it all started in 1969 at the Gotham City Museum. Superman had reassembled the shattered fragments of a piece of sculpture. How could this be a bust of me? Batman asks. If it had been made in Salem almost 200 years ago. Superman responds, Only one way to solve this mystery. Guess. I, I want you to guess how Superman feels the best way to go about solving this mystery is. Go on. Breaking the goddamn space-time barrier. Yes. By breaking the goddamn space-time barrier. Thank you, Pastor Roars. So, Superman <sighs> breaks the space-time barrier to bring them 200 years in the past to figure out why a sculpture looks like Bruce Wayne. In the past, they see Mad Anthony Wayne, a famous leader guarding a British prisoner. Wait a second. Mad Anthony Wayne looks just like Bruce Wayne. Superman decides that he must be an ancestor of Bruce Wayne. While hunting for a clue to the mystery, instead of just calling it a day because they found a man that looks just like Bruce during the period the bus was made, and that should have solved the goddamn mystery, they go to Salem, where Mistress Sylvia is being immersed with a dunking stool to determine if she's a witch. Batman dives in the water to rescue her, thinking, They think she'll survive this ordeal if she's innocent, but there's no such thing as a witch. Following that very confident statement, I just want to inform viewers that may not be aware of Batman's comic history. Before this issue was released, Batman had fought both vampires and werewolves. Batman rescues Sylvia, and she takes a liking to him. But Superman helped save Sylvia, too, secretly. And Superman seemed to have eyes for her. But Sylvia tells Superman, I want to be with Batman, who rescued me. But being Superman, he has to take it a step too far. And at a tavern where Sylvia and Batman are drying off, he uses his super ventriloquism to make it appear as if a black cat is talking to Batman. Come, Batman. You can't deny that you and I are servants of the same master. Satan. Superman, you're kind of a dick. I don't want to be judgmental, because I believe every human being should do their own thing, dress how they want, talk in their own beautiful way, and have their own opinions. But you're kind of a dick. I think maybe... We should have an intervention. Though in all honesty, having a cat accuse Batman of being uh, the servant of Satan was amazing, so high five. Superman thinks, haha, I did it, with my super ventriloquism, and the people at the tavern now believe Batman is a sorcerer. And Superman doesn't stop there. Getting your best friend put in the stocks isn't good enough for Superman. Superman then becomes the town-appointed prosecutor at Batman's trial where he demands the penalty of death at the stake. Oh, yeah. Superman also dressed like Batman and pretended to fly a broomstick. As well, he, and I quote, framed him in other ways. When you have friends like Superman, who needs enemies? Only Sylvia believes Batman's innocence. Your best friend has betrayed you because he is jealous. Because I love you instead of him. I can't believe it. He'll help me. Somehow. At the last moment. This is how fucked up their relationship is. Batman expects Superman to be fucking with him and taking it too far, but not far enough where Batman dies before Superman steps in and is just like, oh yeah, no, I'm, I was totally fucking with you, bro. I was just a prank. Batman. This is an abusive relationship. Get out. Get help. No one will think any less of you. We're here for you. We then jump back to where we were at the beginning of the comic with Batman tied to a stake and requesting for a last wish. Somehow this last wish involves Superman flying and crying out, ha ha ha, fools, you can't hold me. You'll all be in British military prisons when I'm through. While Batman declares Superman as the sorcerer. 
Superman creates a tidal wave of air currents because he didn't really need to do that to escape, he just really wanted to fuck with them a little bit more before heading off to his next destructive activity. Batman is released and Ben Franklin now will be plagued with trying to figure out how Superman got his powers. Meanwhile, Sylvia embraces Batman, saying she shudders to think how near she came to losing him. That bitch is clingy. Batman decides to stop Superman from helping the British, and Sylvia tells him he can't do it alone. She leads Batman to Mad Anthony and his band. Superman has taken flight to the British encampment, where he digs a trench for them and tells General Henley he's at his service. This March, when watching Batman vs. Superman and trying to decide whose side you're on, remember this. Superman isn't for America, truth, or justice. He's for the dirty British. And if you are a non-American viewer, he does whatever annoys you in your own country. Like, all the time. I totally saw him. It's crazy. He's really disrespectful towards you and your, your country's customs. So, just let you know. The General tells Superman to bring Mad Anthony Wayne for questioning. Superman agrees to do so and heads out. Meanwhile, Batman has found Mad Anthony, who remarks that Batman looks just like him. Batman, being the reasonable adult in this scenario, decides not to tell him he's his descendant, and brought here by Superman on a time trip from Gotham City almost 200 years in the future. Batman instead tells Anthony that Superman has turned traitor, and that he needs his help to stop him. Anthony tells Batman his men have gone home until the next raid, but Robbie is coming soon and could fetch the men. At that moment, Superman uses his x-ray vision and sees Batman, Mad Anthony, and Sylvia in the tent below. He picks up the entire tent and takes it to General Henley. Robbie spots them as they leave and follows Superman, declaring he'll find where Anthony is being taken and then get the men to attack. Superman drops a tent at Henley's encampment and brings Anthony to him. The General demands to know the battle plans and names of Anthony's followers, but Mad Anthony refuses, telling the General he'll never get any information from him. Superman gives him a mighty slap. Mad or not, I'll knock some sense into you. It only takes a light slap. Talk. But Superman's mighty bitch slap doesn't work, and he slaps him again. But it's no use. Mad Anthony won't talk. The General is not pleased, and decides to have Mad Anthony shot, and Superman bloodthirsty as ever, asks for the command of the firing squad, which he is given. Let's take a break and applaud General Henley. A superpowered being flies down, demonstrates these crazy abilities, and what does he do? He doesn't try to burn Superman at a stake. He doesn't freak out. He takes the man into a service, gives him jobs, comforts him. He, he gives him responsibilities. That's, that's really open-minded of him, and I think something really special, and, and we need to celebrate him. I think General Henley is the real hero of this story. Superman tells the firing squad to load and aim. Suddenly, Batman comes out and tells him to stop. They have the wrong man. Of course he's lying, trying to save his ancestor. But Superman decides that they should both die instead. Superman then tells them to stop. He has a better idea. He's going to let them both fight to the death with their bare hands. The winner gets to live. For a while, anyway. Ha ha ha! You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. I know there's a twist coming where we discover Superman is being controlled or something, but honestly, at this point in the comics, who doesn't believe that this is actually in character? For Superman. So Mad Anthony and Batman face off with Batman thinking, Anthony won't have a chance against me with my modern knowledge of judo and karate. I'll only defend myself. But Mad Anthony karate chops him, and Batman is surprised because no one knew how to throw their hand at someone back then. And then he surprises Batman by flipping him. Flipping people wasn't invented until 1882 when judo came about. Before then, flipping was a mystery, and when it somehow happened, no one knew how. Batman's face goes into the mud. How could he possibly know 20th century fighting tactics? But before he can use common sense, soldiers burst through the ranks. 
Robbie has brought reinforcements to save Mad Anthony. Batman takes a kryptonite pebble out of his utility belt and gives it to Robbie, instructing him to use his slingshot and hit Superman in the head. The boy succeeds and Batman tells a recovering Superman, You've been momentarily weakened by a kryptonite pebble I always carry for emergencies and a lead compartment in my utility belt. Batman at this point is so used to Superman just losing his total fucking shit, he has a way to take him down at all times, on his person. Together with the soldiers, they scatter the British troops. After the work is done, Batman demands to know why Superman framed him on sorcery charges. Here we go, get ready for the bullshit excuse Superman gives, just for the pleasure of fucking with Batman for a few days. It all started when we first met Mad Anthony guarding a British spy. I noticed he had no shadow. That must mean he's possessed by an evil spirit and it probably fled from the condemned prisoner's body to escape hanging. When the wagon departed, I noticed you. Batman no longer had a shadow, and the demon was now in your body. The only way to scare it out was to endanger Batman's life. Batman! Are you really buying this shit? He's straight up lying to you to get away with trying to kill you! After I framed you on those sorcery charges, which I totally had to do and then kept framing you by doing other shit in your name, I saw that the demon had left your body, but where did it go? Batman chimes in, obviously drinking the Kool-Aid and doing anything to stay in denial that his best friend is a sociopath. It fled into a place you hadn't figured on, Superman. Your own body. I realized that when your shadow disappeared. That's why you turned against us. Yes, that's it. That's the only reason why you'd pull any of that shit on me. Superman, I love you. Please don't leave me. Also, Batman, there's no such thing as witches, but there's vampires, werewolves, aliens, and evil spirits. Eh? Then I stopped you with your one weakness, kryptonite, and the pain drove the evil spirit from your body into General Henley. Superman adds, The spirit must have left me temporarily to return to Mad Anthony's body when he fought you. That's why he was able to clobber you so easily. Honest to God, you can't make this shit up. Why, Superman, that explains everything, except the reason why we came back here in the first place. Before Superman can make up another excuse, Sylvia comes up to the men. I know you must leave me, Batman, so I'm going to make a cast of this impression of your face, made when General Wayne threw you on the muddy ground during your fight. I'll keep it with me always, as a remembrance of you. One day, one day this chick is with Batman, and she's super obsessed with him. Clark may be Superman, but apparently Bruce has a super dick. Breaking through the space-time barrier once more that I'm sure causes no repercussions for time, Batman tells Superman, obviously Sylvia made that bust to me. I'll bet one of her descendants donated it to the Gotham City Museum. Superman ends, but the real scoop is that both you and Robin had doubles in the revolutionary period. So, Superman sees a bust that looks like Bruce Wayne, decides that the, the best way to solve this mystery instead of talking to the museum or maybe doing a little bit of research is to break the space-time barrier. He takes Bruce 200 years in the past to Salem during colonial times, sees a man without a shadow, a man that looks just like Bruce, and a logical person would conclude, hey, during this time period that the bus was created, there's a man that looks just like Bruce who is probably his ancestor. That solves the mystery. No. That wasn't good enough for Superman. He sees a man without a shadow, decides there's a demon, notices his best friend doesn't have a shadow, and decides the, the best way to get the demon out of him is to try to get him executed. You want to know what? Yes. Superman could have handled this better. But, but, given Superman's history, let's just tell him well done. Well done, Superman. This could have been so much more destructive, given your history. So that was another episode of Comic Book Story Time, where we learned that... We didn't really learn anything new, did we? We already knew Superman was batshit crazy during this time, so... I don't know. Anyways, make sure you come back uh, usually every week for a new Comic Book Story Time or a comic-related video but I'm a little bit of a slacker because of my work schedule and I don't always release videos on time even if I already have them done because I am a workaholic and I get consumed 
with what I'm doing. So I apologize for my personality trait, among other things, in advance. But make sure you come back every week for new Star Wars videos, Game of Thrones videos, and Walking Dead reviews, and comic stuff. Usually, maybe, sort of, kind of, I try to. Please, please don't judge me. I have crippling, crippling work pressure. Well, one sleeve is higher than the other. When did that happen? God, I hope that it wasn't like through the entire video.